Hi, everyone. We're going to be getting started in just a couple minutes. So go ahead and sit tight and please say hi in the chat. Uh, let me know if you're a student or a parent. Um, let me know what college you're interested in. Whatever you want to tell me, I'd love to see it. So for those of you just starting, uh, I'm just waiting just a moment here to let other people log in. We've got a lot of people coming onto the call, I can tell. Um, very happy to see you. Um, please say hi in the chat. And, um, and I've been asking to let us know if you're a student or a parent, um, what college you want to go to, um, anything that you would like to tell me. And we're going to get started very soon. Oh, I see someone's going to be attending Academy of Art in 2021. Awesome. And Middlebury Institute of International Studies. I know with that school, actually. I live in California. I'm in the Bay Area. So uh, that's awesome. All right. University of Phoenix. Lots of awesome schools here. BYU. All right. Um, as a few people continue to log in, I'm going to get started a little bit slowly. Uh, I'm Jennifer Finetti. I'm from Scholarship Owl, and we're going to be talking today about top 10 strategies for writing standout essays. This is a very popular topic. Um, I do an essay writing presentation like this a few times a year because it's something that comes up over and over again. It's one of the most popular topics that we discuss, and it's something that's really needed, whether you're applying for scholarships or applying to colleges. Um, I still see people logging in, so I don't want to start the presentation yet. I'm going to continue uh, sort of talking here a little bit uh, to give people a chance to log in. We have pretty high attendance today. so um, And so today in this presentation, I'm going to go over all the tips and techniques that you need to write really good essays that will set you apart and either get you into the college you want or get you the scholarships you're looking for. Um, we're right now, we're in the scholarship high season. Uh, many of you have probably already finished applying to colleges, although grad students um, may still be in the application process. And then of course, the schools that are rolling admissions, uh, some of you may be applying to those schools as well. But this is really the financial aid and scholarship high season. So I would imagine that many of you are here because you're interested in getting scholarships for college. All right, um, it looks like I think most people are in, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, put my slide deck up and uh, I will see you a little bit after the slide deck. We're gonna do a live q and You'll have all the time you need to, a to ask me questions. You'll be able to ask me questions in the chat and you'll also be able, if you want to, to turn your cameras on, turn your mics on and um, I can take live questions with you on screen. Uh, so if you do have any questions, save them up and uh, save them for me at the very end of the presentation. Um, if you stay through, we do have um, something for you that we'll be giving you, and I'll talk to you more about that as well. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my slides up. All right, I'll see you in just a bit as I get started here. So uh, for those of you who weren't here at the beginning, um, I, my name is Jennifer Finetti. I'm with Scholarship Owl. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 strategies for writing standout essays. If you're in the process of applying to colleges or applying for scholarships, you know that the quality of your essays is absolutely critical. One of the most common questions I'm asked is what can I do to ensure that my essay helps my application to stand out from the crowd so that I can get into the college I'm targeting or earns me the scholarship I'm applying for? If you've been wondering the same thing, you're in luck because today I'm gonna to share the top 10 trips and strategies for writing standout essays. These are strategies that I've found to be helpful for my own kids, as well as for the students that I've worked with. So let's take a look at what we're gonna to cover today. All right, so in today's webinar, we will discuss how to approach writing an outstanding application essay, covering everything from how to select which prompts to, resp to respond to, how to develop a plan for your essay, how to set the hook in your intro, and also the actual mechanics and process you should apply when developing your application essays. We will go over tips and strategies that ensure your essay is noticed and remembered, and also discuss the importance of feedback rounds and time management strategies. You'll probably ask some questions as we go along, 
And like I said before, you can jot them down or put them in the chat. And then after the presentation, we're going to open up our live Q&A and you can get into the queue to ask your question live on camera. Or again, you can keep them in the chat and we'll start to go through those as well. Uh, and then for those who watch the entire webinar, we're going to be offering a special thank you gift that I will explain more when we get to that point. So uh, your application essay provides a window into who you are and why the admissions rep should care about you. So it's a critical component of your college application or scholarship application. All factors being equal, a powerful essay may just tip the scales in your favor or could tip them against you if another candidate's essay is more compelling than yours. A well-written essay demonstrates your, your creativity, uniqueness, and grasp of language and grammar. These are factors that can definitely influence an admissions rep. These same factors can also persuade a financial aid advisor to offer you a scholarship. If you're a strongly qualified student, your essay can reaffirm your GPA and test scores and solidify you in the eyes of the college rep. Alternatively, if there are gaps or issues in your qualifications, such as perhaps you feel your GPA or test scores don't truly represent your capabilities, or perhaps you have outstanding academics but haven't participated in extracurriculars to the level that you wish you had, then your essay can help bridge that gap. The essay offers an opportunity for you to showcase your best assets, even within the constraints of a very specific essay topic. And that's something we're gonna be discussing in greater detail later in the presentation. Because we are currently in the high season for applying to scholarships, I'm sure that many of you are working on your scholarship application essays. So I'll probably lean a bit more into talking about those kinds of essays. However, the information is just as relevant for applying to colleges. So either way, what I'm sharing with you today will relate to both types of essays. This is really important. You have to adhere to the instructions. This is not the time to try to break or bend the rules. If the essay has a minimum or maximum word count or character count, stick to it. If the essay requires a specific font style, size, margin, double spacing, etc., make sure you adhere to the requirements. If you're using Scholarship Owl to apply for scholarships, you can use our integrated text editing tool to write your essays. That tool is similar to, to Google Docs, so your essay will be saved within the platform. And you can always start your essay and come back to it later to finish it as well because it saves your essay automatically. If you're not applying to scholarships through our platform, it's important that you always write your application essay either in Google Docs or in a Word doc that you save on your computer. When you're finished and are ready to submit, if the application has a form for you to use for your essay, copy and paste your finished essay into the form, review to ensure your formatting is still there, and fix it if it isn't, and then submit. Never write, an editor, never write and edit your essay directly into the form, because if their system times you out before you submit, you're gonna risk losing your essay, and it has happened to so many students I've worked with. Read the essay prompt thoroughly and break it down into pieces to be sure you understand exactly what's being asked. Stay on topic throughout your essay. Make sure your essay actually responds to the topic. Too often, students start on topic, but meander away from it later on in their essay. When approaching an application essay, it's critical that you take the time to do some research. Now, you may be saying, but an application essay isn't a research paper. Why do I have to do research to write it? So, let me explain. Even though most application essays are not a research paper, you still need to do your due diligence and research the organization that is offering the scholarship or that is accepting students for admission. So for example, for those of you who are targeting your particular college for admission, it's imperative that you take time to research that college. And honestly, it's important that you research every university you're applying to, especially the more selective universities. What are they looking for when making admission decisions? Most universities will have this information on their website. While of course this is important when deciding which college to apply to, it's also important to do this when preparing to write a college application essay or a scholarship essay for a particular university. Having this information will enable you to tailor your essay, enabling you to showcase how you fulfill what they're looking for in a student and how you'll fit with their campus culture. Doing your research is also important when applying for an essay offered by a nonprofit organization or corporation. For example, let's say you're applying for a scholarship offered by a company you've never heard of. You'll want to research the company to find out who they are, what they do, and what they care about. This will then help you decide how to focus and tailor your essay to ensure that the people who read your essay will feel more connected to your essay and through your essay to you. After you've done this research, think about how you fit in with what the university or company or organization cares about and jot some notes down about yourself as it relates to the research you've conducted. Then show your notes to your parents or another adult who know you well. 
Describe what you found out when conducting your research and talk about the notes you've written about yourself. Ask for their input and suggestions because chances are that person will have additional insight that you can leverage as you move on to the next step. Now it's time to create your outline. Start by copying and pasting the essay prompt on the top of the document so you can easily refer to it. Of course, if you're using the Scholarship All platform text editing tool, then your essay prompt will automatically be available there for you to refer to. Next, create a rough outline similar to the way you've created outlines for essays in school. If the maximum allowed word count is pretty short, then you might only have three paragraphs for your essay, a short intro, a longer body paragraph, and a short conclusion. If the maximum allowed word count is more flexible or longer, then your essay might have four or five paragraphs, an intro, two to three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Organize your outline according to the number of paragraphs you anticipate that you'll have. Within each section of your outline, jot down ideas for what you'd like to include. No need for complete sentences, just notes are fine. Be sure to review the essay prompt periodically to ensure that what you're including in your outline responds to the prompt, and to ensure that you're responding to the entire question rather than just a portion of it. Once your draft outline is complete, review what you've written and think about what makes you unique. Consider your academic abilities, your skills, talents, volunteer service, extracurriculars, etc. What will you be majoring in? How might your major impact what you write about in response to this prompt? Consider your personal background, any challenges you've encountered and overcome. How much of any of this have you incorporated into your outline? If you feel that you've missed some things that you would really like to share, Consider the essay prompt again and see what you can do to incorporate some of what makes you unique into your outline in a way that strengthens your response to the essay prompt. Avoid trying to cram details into your essay if they pull you off topic, but if there is a way to incorporate some of these details about yourself into the essay while still staying on topic, update your outline accordingly. If needed, you can eliminate some of the things that were previously in your outline too, so long as you do so while keeping the essay prompt in mind. Think about what you learned in school about writing essays. Essays require time and planning. Don't rush, especially with an essay this important. After starting with an outline, you're gonna to proceed to writing your first draft. Then you'll review and edit your essay in a second round and do it again for a third round and probably, or po I should say possibly or probably, a fourth or fifth time if needed. The bottom line, don't start your application essay the night before it's due. But, of course, if you're in a bind and you want to apply for a scholarship that has a fast approaching deadline, maybe even a next day or same day deadline, I'm not saying that you shouldn't apply. Of course, it's always better to apply early, but if you simply can't, you should still apply for the scholarship. You can still use the tips and strategies in this webinar to help increase your chances of earning the scholarship. Because, of course, if you don't apply for the scholarship, then you have no chance of earning it. But if you do apply, then you do have a chance, even if you're applying at the last minute. So it's definitely worth it. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual process of writing your essay. When creating your rough draft, once again, start with the essay prompt at the top of your document. Begin writing the introduction, using your outline as the starting point. Strong essays have a hook that pulls the reader in from the get-go. What will your hook be? Each essay reader may be reading hundreds of essays. Put yourself in their shoes. Would you like to read the same kinds of essays over and over and over again? Your eyes would likely glaze over. You'll need to make sure that your essay has a strong intro to ensure that your application reviewer is paying attention. With that in mind, spend some time on this first paragraph and do your best to set that hook while also ensuring that your first paragraph appropriately conveys the key points that will be discussed in your essay. This is really important. You want to be sure to show and not tell. It's easy to say, I love playing soccer. I've been a competitive soccer player for the past seven years and I've made significant contributions to my high school's varsity team. But it takes more thought and care to truly show the reader how and why soccer is important to you. The best way to do this is by sharing details and examples that demonstrate your commitment to the sport. A UC admissions consultant with a blog called Ask Misk Sun said it this way in a recent blog post. Follow the format of, this is what I want you to know. This is an example showing you what I want you to know. This is what I just told you. Here's an example. Soccer is truly integral to my life. In addition to training with my team every day, I also devote my personal time to training, running drills and practicing shots on goal in my backyard before I get ready for school. I also do weight and cardio training at a fitness center to build strength and endurance. My younger sister is an avid soccer player as well, and I take time to work with her and her team every week. I'm a top ranked player in my state and would love to be a Duke University Blue Devil, as I know I would be part of an elite team that would truly challenge me. 
See the difference? And this is important for both application essays and scholarship essays. Next, write the body paragraphs for your essay using both your outline and introductory paragraph to get you started. Be sure to review the essay prompt often to be sure you're not this, to be sure you're not straying off topic. And always remember to show, not tell. Draft your concluding paragraph, being sure to summarize the points made in the preceding paragraphs while also ending with a compelling final sentence. Within this paragraph, you'll want to refer back to the essay prompt and what you write, ensuring the reader connects the dots appropriately. Review your essay in entirety, tweaking the phrasing where needed. Chances are you'll need to adjust your intro paragraph a bit now that you've written the entire essay, as you've got greater perspective now. And you'll probably have a better arc throughout if you make some adjustments to that first paragraph. Check your word count. How close are you to the maximum word count? If your essay is significantly under the maximum word count, go back into your essay and build it up further with more detail. If you're significantly over the word count, check to see what you can easily trim down. If you are over the word count, but not significantly over, then congratulations, you are where you should be for a first draft. I know that I already told you about the importance of starting early in a previous strategy, but here it is again. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you start early so that you'll have plenty of time to edit, get feedback, and edit again. But of course, when applying for scholarships, better late than never in any case, because remember, you can't get a scholarship if you don't even try to apply for it. That said, if all possible, I recommend you wait at least one full day before starting your second draft of the essay. You'll have a fresh perspective, enabling you to have greater insight into what edits are needed. Review your essay thoroughly. Review the essay prompt and make sure that your essay appropriately answers the entire prompt. Assuming that you've exceeded the maximum word count somewhat, look for ways to trim your essay down to the appropriate length. Review and fix any grammatical, punctuation, and spelling errors. Review your essay to ensure that you haven't used any specific words repeatedly, as well as to ensure that your content in general isn't repetitive. This is a common problem, especially for students who have written essays that are under the word count. If you find that you've overused certain words or ideas, make the necessary revisions to resolve. Refrain from plugging in synonyms you can find in a thesaurus to make it sound like you have a big vocabulary. If you do, it's likely the essay readers will recognize that you've done this. Instead, if you feel that your vocabulary doesn't reflect your grasp of the English language, review what you've written and think about how you might evaluate, I'm sorry, how you might elevate your writing without relying on the crutch of a thesaurus. Consider your tone and writing style to confirm that they reflect the writing skills of a student entering college and to confirm that you come across as emotionally connected to what you're writing about. This is important. If you seem emotionally disconnected from your subject, your essay will feel flat to the reader. Refer to your outline and notes about what you wanted to cover in your essay. Have you hit all the points you planned? Did you leave anything on the table? And if so, do you want to make changes to incorporate anything that's missing? Or do you feel that the missing points can be omitted? Address any of these issues and finish up your edits so that you have a completed second draft ready. It's important that you obtain feedback. There are, of course, several options for feedback. You can ask several different people in your life to read your essay and give you feedback, such as your parent or guardian, a teacher, a guidance counselor, a college admissions advisor. Once you've received feedback, consider it and incorporate the recommended edits that you agree with, keeping in mind the word count, as well as your own view of the recommendations that have been made. Remember, this is your essay, and it should reflect your own thoughts, ideas, and experiences. Refrain from allowing an adult to rewrite your essay for you. Admission reps and, college, uh, and scholarship application readers are pretty savvy and will likely be able to tell if someone else has written much of your essay. After all the effort you've spent on this essay, it can be tempted to, tempting to rush to upload it and finally click the submit button on your application, but it's so important that you take the time to review your essay again and ask your reviewers to do the same. Be sure your essay is error-free, no spelling errors and no punctuation errors. If you have been using track changes in Microsoft Word, or if you've been editing within Google Docs, you may find that while making the changes, you've accidentally omitted a comma or a period. Be sure to review your essay thoroughly and fix any issues you find. You should also reread the instructions for the essay and confirm that your document is formatted per the requirements and confirm you're within the required word count. Most college application essay topics and scholarship topics lend themselves to a personal narrative, meaning that you are likely not having to do much, if any, research to write your essay. But there are some scholarship essay topics that likely do require some research. If this is the case for you, it should go without saying that you will need to cite sources of any data or information that you found online or through resources at your library, etc. 
It should also go without saying that you must ensure that all writing is your own. Do not plagiarize or create the appearance that you are plagiarizing. If you have access to a Turnitin account or something similar that can do a plagiarism check, I highly recommend that you use it. Once you are certain that your essay is the way you want it, you should be good to go. You can then follow the upload instructions on the application or copy and paste it into the essay window. Next, go through the entire application to be sure you've completed everything and attached any required documents. Once you know the application is complete and accurate and your essay or essays are attached, click the submit button on your application. Some tips to remember. Write about something that truly matters to you and that also responds to the essay prompt. If you're writing about computer science, what is it about that field that fascinates you? What do you hope to accomplish once you have your degree? Be emotionally connected to your subject and show that in your writing. I have read many draft application essays and I find this is one of the most common issues I come across, that the writer seems disconnected or indifferent in their emotional tone. Show your passion and your determination. Choose words and phrases that let that come through in your writing. If there are things you want to communicate about yourself, find ways to put a bit of that into your essay without going off on an obvious tangent. This can be challenging if the essay prompt isn't really related to what you want to discuss. You might not be able to convey everything you would like, but you may be able to integrate one or two points that support the topic. If possible, incorporate a brief anecdote that demonstrates your emotional connection to the subject and that can also showcase your ability to problem solve a situation. Review your use of figurative language, syntax, vocabulary, etc. Your writing should be collegiate in style and tone while still being personal, reflecting who you are and what you care about. Always proofread carefully and get feedback on the essay. As a special thank you for attending this webinar and staying on through the live Q&A with me, which will start momentarily, we're gonna be offering a checklist tool for you. My application essay checklist is an invaluable tool that you can use throughout the essay writing process, whether you're applying to colleges or applying to scholarships. This is the ideal companion for the webinar and I know you'll find it to be a helpful resource. So stay on with us now to be sure you're able to receive this after the live Q&A. All right, I'm gonna turn off my slides and go back on camera. All right, so um, I hope you all enjoyed that presentation and found it helpful. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking questions. Um, if you're interested in going on camera, you can click the little hand button that says speak and um, I see somebody is in there now. I'm gonna see if I can get him to be joining me here in the room. So we'll see if he shows up here. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna go through um, some of the posts here in the chat and I'm gonna answer questions. Wow, I see there's a lot of um, comments here. Um, all right, sorry, one second here. Um, somebody has asked, will the recording of this be available later? Yes, it will. Um, you'll be able to get an email within the next 24 hours that will have a link to the replay video and that will also have a link to where you can download the application checklist or the, the application essay checklist. All right, um, I'm gonna try to let somebody else in the room. The first person didn't show up, so we'll see here. I'm hoping that I'm not having a glitch. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see. Yeah, I don't see. Oh, here, Seth has joined the room. Awesome. Hi, Seth, how can I help you? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Can you yes, me? I can. The camera so you can see me. Okay, there that would be great. great. Hello. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for uh, everything you do. I appreciate you. Uh, everything, all the valuable information you uh, provide, for me as a, as a high school senior is, uh, helps out a lot. Awesome. And I have two two quick questions. Uh, okay. What would you say the best way how I distinguish uh, three prompts that I can choose from? So I'm doing a I'm doing a uh, essay for a scholarship and it's three prompts, but one of them uh, is about challenges. And I don't know if I have time to pull it up, but it's about challenges that I face before and I have to describe them in my 350 word essay and I've done it before, but I don't think I'm too capable of winning the scholarship essay if I talk about challenges I face and uh, how do I distinguish that between the other two? Okay, the best sure. First of all, are you supposed to respond to all three prompts or are you supposed to pick one? Pick one. Pick one, okay. So uh, this is a great question. A lot of people ask me about how to deal with a challenge question or an adversity essay, what's what a lot of people call it, or a hardship essay. Um, 
so if you have a choice, then you can decide if that's the right essay for you. If you've had challenges in your life that you have worked hard to overcome or that you have you know, been able to persevere and get through, then that could be a really good choice for you. If you have not had so much adversity or hardship, which is also true, many students don't have a lot of adversity, then I always recommend that they not choose that type of essay, that they go for more of an achievement essay that allows them to show what they've accomplished. But if you do have challenges in your life that have been difficult for you, then it's a great idea to focus on that topic. And the way you can actually do well with that type of an essay is not to just talk about the challenges, but to talk about what those challenges were and how you then responded to those challenges and how you, you, know, you met those challenges and resolved them for yourself. So that could be challenges in your life related to your, your family of upbringing. It could be academic challenges. Um, it could be problems you had at school could be financial challenges for your family. There's all kinds of challenges that somebody might experience. And then you wanna talk about how you dealt with those challenges and how you overcame them. So um, does that help you? It helps a lot. And one more question. So there are uh, various essays that I wanna do and, and sometimes the deadline cup appears so quickly and I don't have an opportunity or I don't qualify for it. And how do I navigate through that and uh, and exceed the word of the word count amount and distinguish that between ACT essays and uh, scholarship essays as opposed to uh, essays for different purposes and reasons. Okay, I'll do my best to answer. You got a lot of questions there. Uh, and uh, Rebecca, hang on, we're gonna get to you in a second. Um, okay, so first of all, um, I think it's great that you mentioned multiple essays. One of the things that's really awesome about the fact that you have multiple essays that you may be written before is you can often repurpose those and leverage them for scholarships, right? So if you've written, let's say, a 650 word essay for the Common App, and you've already submitted that you know, for the Common App, you can probably take that essay and make minor tweaks to it and also use it to apply for scholarships. So definitely keep your library of essays available to you so that you can kind of shuffle through and repurpose them because the faster you can actually take an existing essay and edit it down, or edit it up depending on what's needed, you can actually apply to scholarships faster and more often and, uh, and get more done. So that's one way that you can really help with that. Um, and then as far as um, keeping track of the deadlines, I don't know if you've used our scholarship all platform, but if you have, or if you will be using it, um, we have a great dashboard that kind of sorts things for you in different ways. And one of the ways you can sort is by deadline so that you can see which scholarships are due right away and which ones you have more time on. So I would definitely recommend if you're in our platform that you use that and that will help you to keep track and organize with what you're doing. All right. Thank you. I, I might be back on uh, later. And request <laughs> okay. to again. Thanks for all, right. all the valuable information. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Seth. All right, Rebecca, you ready? Uh, yes. So I have two quick questions. One of them is when writing the essay, um, I have a problem with trying to make this sentence structure more diverse because when you use the same thing over and over again, it feels redundant and pretty yeah. straightforward and lifeless. But when I do, I'm using passive voice and that's not good. And I also like to use thesaurus.com because <laughs> <laughs> I'm very redundant. So yeah. How can I fix that and the hook? That too, I have some issues with the hook. Okay, I'll do my best to help you here. Um, so first of all, as far as um, trying to not be repetitive, to have your more creative thinking and more creative writing and better word usage, um, you know, it's okay to use thesaurus.com to get an idea or something, but sometimes, and you know, this may not apply to you, what I find is that sometimes a word that is chosen as like a cinnamon, <laughs> synonym that someone has used, Sometimes it sticks out like a sore thumb because it's not quite the right word to fit in the sentence. And it's like, oh, I know what they, word they wanted to use and they stuck this one in instead. So it's important that if you are gonna use thesaurus.com or a similar, you know, a thesaurus book or whatever, that the word you choose truly makes sense in the sentence the way it's placed. Okay. But beyond that, um, you know, when I find that students struggle sometimes to communicate what they wanna convey in a way that's interesting is, I tell them that instead of just worrying about writing it all the time, 
to talk out loud and explain what you're trying to say to somebody else, to explain it to a friend or a parent or a teacher, or even just explain it to yourself out loud. Like what in the world am I trying to communicate here? Because sometimes when you talk out loud, you use more expression and it's easier because it feels more casual, whereas an essay is more formal. So if you can do that and if you can sort of talk through it, you might find that then you find better ways to phrase it and ways to sound more interested in what you're talking about. Okay. Okay, and then as far as setting the hook, um, people ask me all the time, what's a great way to start an essay, right? You, you know you wanna be unique, you wanna be different. Um, a, one way that is a really good way to start an essay is with anecdote that relates to the topic. So you can start by telling some story in your life that's you know brief, maybe a few sentences, and then make sure that by the end of the first paragraph, you've connected it to what your topic is going to be about. So you want it, you still want to have that sort of thesis in your essay. And then you can go into the body paragraph and talk and reflect on that anecdote and what it meant to you and how it applies to this to your essay prompt, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And I think I had one more. Okay. It's really quick. Um, it was okay, I remember. So okay. I my academic abilities i feel like my grade and the sat i'm fine with that i'm i'm okay in that area but in the extracurricular uh extracurricular activities uh i don't think they really have much to do with my major or their scholarship i'm doing so how could i say write a resume because i've seen that a couple of scholarships want resumes with your experience and I haven't had that much. Okay. What's uh, your major? Uh, architecture. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to get architecture experience yeah. as a student, right? It's um, yeah. Do you, do you like to draw? I used to, but not to the point where I would want to make uh, a portfolio to right. send to colleges. Okay. Not that but hard. do you think you have drawing talent, even if you don't want to do a portfolio? I, uh, it's more on the hobby okay. spectrum, not really good enough. Okay, yet. and that's okay, because I was going to say, if it's a hobby, that's all right, too. That's still an extracurricular. It may not be a formal one, but it's still relevant. Um, I don't know if you know how to use any CAD software or if you do any drafting. I, my parents, like every summer or break I get, they make me watch classes and webinars so i have okay that's something you can talk about right so those are things that are related and then if you have other hobbies or other interests other extracurriculars that are not related that's okay because it shows another facet of who you are you know they don't want people that are just architects applying when they're high school students they want to know if you can sing if you can dance if you can do a sport they want to have diverse people within their the, either the college or if, it's, if you're applying for scholarships, they're just interested in finding out who you are um, and, and why you need the scholarship. You know, one of the things, and I say this to everybody watching, is sometimes we all get so caught up in what the topic of the essay is for a scholarship that we forget to say how the scholarship would really help. And so I always recommend you put some of that into the conclusion of the essay to say, you know, that you know my i'm doing what i can to be able to pay for college and you know you can describe that in some level of detail and say but this scholarship would really make such a difference for me in me being able to achieve my academic and career goals so you know that's important as well thank you you're welcome thank you so much i'm gonna see who else is in the room to come on in here okay i'm gonna let bailey in and then after that jesse and then preserve i hope i'm pronouncing that right but we'll start with Bailey, if uh, if I can get her in. I'm going to wait just a minute. If she doesn't show up, then I'll switch to Jesse and, and, oh, okay. I see somebody else is in line now. Oh, I got a few people. So hang tight, everybody. I'm going to get to as many of you as I can. Um, I don't see ba Bailey yet, so I'm going to let Jesse in. And um, Bailey, if you want to get back in the queue, you're welcome to do that. Okay, let's see if I can get Jesse in here. Um, meanwhile, while I'm waiting for somebody to join me in the room here, um, I'm going to see if I can ask uh, answer some other questions here. Um, somebody's asking if I go to, to do I go to school in north or northern or southern California? Um, I'll go ahead and talk to Bailey. Glad you're here, Bailey. Um, but uh, just to answer that question. I live in the Bay Area. I went to college at University of California, Santa Cruz, and got my bachelor's in psychology 
And I got my master's from National University and my master's is in counseling psychology. Uh, so there you go. Okay, Bailey, do you wanna start talking? And Jesse, you can just wait until Bailey's done. Um, so I had two questions. Okay. Um, first of all, do you think it's smart to use like humor in an essay or do you think it's like a little too tough? Or? <laughs> I think if you truly are funny, <laughs> it can be good, right? You have to test it and, you know, show your essay to other people and see if they think it's funny. And as long as it's not crude or rude, um, you know, you don't want to turn somebody off. But if it's humor that nobody would be offended by, there's nothing wrong with that. And again, you want to get people's attention. That's one great way to do it. Because essays, if you read hundreds of them in a row, it can be pretty boring. So a little humor can lighten things up. And also, um, I was wondering, like, so I'm very grateful my parents make, like, you know, enough money, I think, like, to send me to college. Um, but I I think it is it's better for me if I pay for my college, um, you know, by myself and through scholarships. And I was wondering how I would phrase this for like showing financial need and scholarships. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I think in terms of financial need, if you don't technically have financial need, like if if the, if the FAFSA has been submitted and the FAFSA expected family contribution number, which is the EFC number is kind of high, then you're not going to get financial need scholarships, but you can get merit scholarships. And um, you still, if you know, you're know you in a situation where technically your parents could pay for you if they want to, and if, and if you'd like to receive the, the funding from them, there are students though, whose families may be able to afford to pay, but they refuse to pay. So, you know, your situation is a little different, but I just want to speak to that for those of you who are listening, who are in a situation where your FAFSA number comes back too high, but your parents either are unable or are unwilling to help. Um, you can address that in your scholarship application. You can kind of talk about your personal family experience. In your case, though, um, you know, what you it sounds like what you'd like to do is at least get some scholarship money to help your parents out. So it's not all on them. And so you have some skin in the game and, and you've put in some effort. And I think that's great. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with going for a merit scholarship or two and, and students win them all the time. You know, I will tell those of you who are watching here that um, I find the students that are most successful in getting scholarships are more high achieving students. And this is because they're willing to take the time and put in the effort to apply for scholarships. Um, so many students could easily qualify for scholarships if they just applied, but it does take time. It takes effort and everyone's really busy, especially in senior year. Um, you know, everybody's trying to keep their grades up right now with COVID. Everybody's Zooming all the time. It's, it's a lot this year. Um, but that also means that maybe scholarship providers and universities are going to be more caring. They might be more supportive. They might be willing to help out more than usual. So this is also a great year to sort of I don't want to say this negatively or have it come across negatively, but take advantage of the fact that there are a lot of organizations out there who really want to help students. And so um, I, I think it's awesome that you want to do what you can to help pay for college on your own. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to Bailey and bring Jesse in. Hi, Jesse. Can are, is your mic on? Is it on? Oh, now, now I hear you. Great. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I have two quick questions. Um, my first one is uh, I'm a high school junior and I'm just super involved and busy with a lot of things. And even if I do try to sit down and get all my information for these um, uh, scholarships and just um, essays and all that stuff, I just find it very difficult to like keep a schedule. Do you have any like tips and recommendations for that? Absolutely. So, um, you know, I don't know how many of you are already scholarship owl members or if you're in a free trial or whatever, but one of the things that I can say about our platform is that it helps you to be organized. Um, it's not going to solve all your problems. You still, of course, have to apply, right? If you don't apply, you're not going to get any scholarships. But um, it does make it easier for you to organize the scholarship application process. One of the things that we do in our app is that we put what we call recommended scholarships out to every student in the app every week. Every week you get three recommended scholarships and they're from your matched scholarships. So it's already, they're already matched to you. You're already a good match to them. 
but they're scholarships that we recommend to you based on your profile, based on your habits in the app, and also based on when the scholarships are due, how many people have applied. So if you don't have time to like search through the 500 matches in, in the platform, you don't have to because you can say to yourself, okay, there's three recommended scholarships this week. I'm gonna pick one. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna apply. And then maybe a couple days later, if you have time, do another one. Um, it's a great way to just do something every week. I tell students, if you can, try to apply to three scholarships a week. There are a lot of students that look at me like I'm crazy, like, oh my gosh, I can't possibly do three scholarships a week. I get that, and not everybody can. Uh, but if you can't do three, try two. If you can't do two, try one. If you can't do one a week, then you know all is not lost. Change it to, okay, I'm gonna try to do two scholarships a month. I'm gonna do one a month. You just gotta somehow integrate a pattern into your life that you can commit to. And um, you know, some scholarships require essays, some don't. Um, and so if you don't have a lot of time, apply to all the no essay scholarships because it literally takes seconds in our platform. And then you know, apply for an essay scholarship when you have time. Or if you just can't stand writing essays, but you have a great personality, then go ahead and apply to scholarships that require a video. You know, you can jot down some notes and be like, okay, here's what I wanna talk about. I'm gonna turn on my camera and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do it and it's gonna be two minutes long and I'm gonna hit submit. Now I don't have to write an essay because I just applied to a scholarship with video. So there's all kinds of scholarships that are available for you and you can definitely integrate them into your life if it's something you wanna do. Also, you're a junior, I think that's awesome that you're looking at this now. And so whatever you can apply to as a junior is great, but know that senior year is the big year for scholarships. So if you can't quite get to them this year, you do have some time next year. Um, but you don't want to wait too long. Um, you know, a lot of students will contact me after they get accepted to the school, right? Their acceptance has come, May 1st comes along and they go, okay, I've made my decision. Now I know where I want to go, but I need $20,000 in scholarships to get there. And it's like, oh no, you're not going to get $20,000 in scholarships now. Scholar you know, college starts in three months. So you definitely want to know what your price point is. You want to find a college that fits your budget and and figure out, you know, if you think you need 5,000, if you need 10,000, if you need 2,000, whatever that number is that you think is going to make a difference to get you in, figure out a way to get that money, right? And yeah. that could be scholarships. It can be a part-time job or a summer job. So it doesn't always have to be scholarships. Scholarships are a great way to go, but, you know, be creative. Think of other ways that you can earn money as well for yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Right. You're My welcome. question is um, kind of like Bailey's with the humor part, um, <laughs> but I'm more like a public speaker, but would it be a good idea to like put like famous icons quotes in there in our essays? You can absolutely just make sure you attribute them to the right person, right? Okay. So, you know, that's, that's the important part, but absolutely. Okay, that's it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna let somebody else in the room now. Let's see who's in the queue. All right, uh, preserve, and then I'm gonna let, I, gosh, I hope I don't butcher everybody's names here. So uh, next is gonna be Baljinder, I think, and then I've got Danielle and a couple more people after. So uh, let's see, while we're waiting for the next person to come in, I'm gonna take a look here in the chat. Um, let's see here. Um, Somebody's talking about SAT and ACT scores. Um, yes, they are test optional for many schools this year. Um, there are some colleges though that say they're test optional, but they're still using SAT and ACT scores to help determine who gets the scholarships. So you wanna make sure you're aware of that. Um, I see a lot of people talking about California schools in the chat. This is awesome. I love California. Um, let's see here. Um, what advice do you have for those who don't know where to begin when referencing your own experience? Um, you know, if you're really struggling with that, I always recommend asking somebody who knows you. You can say to that person, I, you know, I'm really struggling with this question. What would you tell me about me that you think I could write about that would be relevant? And you would be surprised at how many people will have, have know something about you, have some insight that you haven't thought about for yourself, because it's so hard to brag about yourself, right? That's how people feel when they're writing these essays is they think, gosh, you know, I wanna be humble. I don't wanna be telling everybody about my achievements. So have somebody help you and put those thoughts into words with you so that you can jot them down. Um, let's see here, I'm still waiting for somebody to join me in the room. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite somebody else. Um, so 
hopefully somebody's going to join us in just a minute. If not, I will invite the next person. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to go into the chat here. Um, somebody's asking if I'm an international student, can I get a scholarship to study in college from Scholarship Owl? We do have scholarships for international students in our platform. They're not, we don't have as many as we would have for students who, you know, are living in the United States and are United States citizens, but there are definitely scholarships in our platform for international students. Um, also, you should apply to scholarships from the universities you're applying to because usually the best scholarships for international students will come directly from the universities you apply to. Um, let's see here. Um, where is the checklist? That's going to be coming in an email. Um, gosh, I don't know why people aren't joining me in the room. So I'm going to invite Danielle into the room. So let's see if Danielle can join me. Um, Let's see here. Somebody's asking if I did not meet the required score for the college I'm applying to, can I still apply for that college? Most colleges don't have a specific minimum score that they require, but they do have score a score they might recommend, right? So if a college says that their typical um, SAT score, hi, Danielle, I'll be talking to you in just a second. Um, if a college typically, let's say, says, well, the average student we accept gets a 650 on their math, and if you've got a 625, it does not mean you should not apply. You should definitely still apply. Okay, Danielle, you want to get your camera on? And, and your mic as well. Hello, how can I help you? Um, so I have a specific question to a prompt. I'm applying for a summer program at NYU and I chose this prompt and I was wondering what you would recommend to go over in my essay. So, okay, what's the prompt? Um, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? And it's 500 to 650 words. Wow. Okay. Do you have an idea already about what you want to write about? I, so, I sort of started my introduction. I kind of want to write about reading and I was thinking about saying how reading has opened up even more interest for me. Like now I'm a Greek mythology nerd. I love reading 1800s books. I kind of wanted to write about that, but I don't really know how to connect it. What's, um, what are you majoring in? Oh, I'm, I'm a high school junior This is for a summer program. Okay, and what's the summer program going to be about? Sorry. Um, it basically it just it connects you with NYU admissions officers, and they help you with your college applications and your resumes, and they edit your essays, and just based on what they want. And NYU is one of my top choices. So okay. It be beneficial. And what will you be majoring in when you go to college? Um, I'm debating between speech therapy and psychiatry. Okay, interesting. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to give you just brief advice here just because, you know, it's hard to help somebody with an individual situation like this. You've got a specific prompt. But I think if reading is something that does fascinate you and captivates you, and if you can talk about it in a way about maybe how when you're reading it transports you and um, is an escape, or maybe it, you know, inspires you creatively. There's different ways um, that you can address that. Also, if you're thinking of being a speech pathologist, I would think that there's probably a way to maybe connect um, reading to speech pathology, possibly, um, because you know it deals with language and things like that. So that's um, another idea that might help you. Um, if you are, are you a member of Scholarship Owl by any chance? Yes, I am. You are, okay. Um, you can, uh, I'm going to I'm also help students write with their essays, you know, so if you are already a member of Scholarship Owl, um, you can possibly get some assistance from me. You can email support at scholarshipowl.com and they will connect you to me and maybe I can, you know, review your essay once you get something written down. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Um, I'm going to see who is next. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. It's um, and and Wani, I think I hope I <laughs> I hope I said that okay. So I uh, have invited you to the room, and I'm also next. I'm going to invite Krista. So whoever um, joins the room first is uh, going to be in the room first with me, and um, and then I've got a few people after. So don't worry. Um, okay, I'm going to look in the chat while I'm waiting for someone. Um, somebody mentions here FastWeb is a great scholarship website. It is, definitely. Um, scholarship Owl is just one. FastWeb is another. There are many scholarship websites online. Um, okay. 
I've applied to many scholarships, but I haven't won any, so I think I'm not doing something right, but I'm not sure what. Okay, that's a great question. It's really rough, right? Because just because you apply to scholarships doesn't mean you're going to actually get the scholarship. But it also depends on what types of scholarships you're applying to and how many you're applying to. Because in many ways, scholarships are, is a numbers game, right? If you only applied to three scholarships, the chances of you getting a scholarship is a lot slimmer than if you applied to 50 scholarships. So, you know, you kind of have to figure out for yourself when you're asking yourself why you're not earning scholarships. Is it because you're not applying to enough? Is it because maybe your essays are rushed or, you know, it's maybe essay writing is a challenge for you. Maybe you need somebody to give you some essay feedback. The other thing is a lot of people will apply for what we call no essay scholarships. Essentially, these are scholarships that have no requirements where you fill out a form and then they do a lottery draw. And as you can imagine, there will be thousands and thousands of students that apply to those. So if you're only applying to no essay scholarships, it's much harder to get a scholarship versus if you're applying to scholarships that require an essay or a video or something like that, a lot fewer students are gonna apply. So um, you'll have less competition. So that's one tip to really think about. Um, within the Scholarship Out platform, if you are using our dashboard, you'll see that we actually tell you how many students in our platform have applied to each scholarship. So you can look and go, okay, this one has 100 students that applied, this one has 50, this one has 30,000, right? So it can help you decide which scholarships you want to apply to. So I highly recommend um, that you look at the number of applicants when you're in our platform. Um, Gosh, nobody is joining me here in the room. So I'm going to invite a, another person. I'm going to invite Chad and uh, we will see um, if he's able to join me. Um, I'm going to continue answering questions in the chat. Um, let's see here. Um, sorry. Where do we write the essays? I've heard of the Common App, but I'm not exactly sure what that is. So um, if you are applying to colleges, in many cases, you'll do something using the Common App. So that is for applying to colleges, it's not applying for scholarships. Um, the Common App is something that is used for many private schools, but it's not often used for state schools. So, you know, if you've got in public, in state public universities, for example, um, Texas has their own application called Apply Texas. The University of California campuses have their own application. So each state for the public universities typically has their own application process, but many of the private schools use the Common App. Um, still not getting people in the room with me. I'm getting sad now. Um, so I'm going to invite Alina or Alina and um, I'm going to invite Chad. We'll see if I can get either of them to come in uh, while I'm uh, continuing to answer questions in the chat. Um, somebody's asking if Scholarship Owl is free. So the way that it works is you start with a free trial, which is seven days. And during your free trial, you can apply to as many scholarships as you want to within our app. And if you cancel by the end of seven days, then your credit card will not be charged. Everything is fine. The scholarships you've applied to will still be active and you'll be notified if you do get a scholarship. Um, if you have tried it, the trial and you like it and you want to keep going, then after the seven days, your credit card will charge for the dollar amount that you've selected. We have monthly plans, quarterly plans, annual plans, so it kind of depends. Um, it's about, um, I don't know exactly what the pricing is right now because I don't have it in front of me. I don't want to misquote it, but I think it's about $20 a month um, to apply. And I think the quarterly might be $45 for three months. So for those of you interested. Okay, so I'm going to invite Alina or Alina. Can you, um, oh, there you are. How do I say your name? Alina. Okay. How can I help you today? Um, so I had a question like about the, the SAT scores. So I haven't taken the SATs yet because of COVID-19. Sure. So I was wondering like what other things I can do in order to actually like when I'm applying for scholarships, like what other things I can additionally add? Because you don't have test scores, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you a high school senior right now? High school junior. Okay, so you may have an opportunity to take the test and you may not want to, right? That's up to you. Um, I would say if you have an opportunity to take it, take it and then you can see your score and see if you want to submit it because you don't have to submit it to the schools that are test optional, but then at least we'll see what you've got. Um, as far as other ways to stand out, 
um, you'll want to look and see how the colleges say on their websites how they're considering applicants that don't have test scores. Typically, they're going to be more focused on the GPA. If they do require an application essay, they're going to be looking at that. They're going to be looking at your extracurriculars, your volunteer service, um, whether or not you've been involved in sports. So these are all ways that students can set themselves apart. Um, I know it's harder right now to do extracurriculars if you are Zooming from home rather than being on campus, as many students are. But um, most high schools still do have clubs that are active. They're just active from a distance. So um, you can still participate in organizations at your school. You can aim to get an officer position possibly, and then you'd have something like, you know, that you can talk about in your essay. So those are the kinds of things that you can do to help yourself stand out. Okay, and then I had another question too. So okay. um, I was like wondering about like, um, so like I wrote an essay and like, I don't have much experience. Like I have a good GPA, but um, so I'm a running start student. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if it was too early to, uh, not to reply, to apply for scholarships. Like if I'm doing running start already and it's, I, it's not too early to apply. Okay. So um, obviously there are some scholarships that might have a minimum, you know, school year. There might be some that are only for seniors, for example. But many of the scholarships in our system are open to students that are younger than senior year. So it's absolutely not too early to apply. OK. And then um, for you mentioned that you should include like anecdotes like in your essays at the beginning. Yeah. So I included that in my like one of my scholarships. Um, so I was wondering, um, I think I stretched it out a little too much. Like, I think like half of my essay was like literally my wow. story. Okay. So I was wondering how I can like shorten it down a little bit just so I could stay like on topic. Sure, sure. Yeah. And that's really a good point. It's a good idea. Um, first of all, I would say if whatever day you've written it, you know, or if, I don't know how long ago it was, but take a break, come back to it in a day or two and look at it again. But also ask for, you know, and somebody else to look at it and suggest ways that you can trim it down. Um, sometimes it's literally for me, because I, you know, I work with students and I help them trim down their essays and, it, and I'll look at this and go, okay, this person's 50 words over the word count, what can we do? And so it's like taking one word out of this sentence, taking two words out of that sentence, finding a shorter way to say that. It's actually, um, if you, it can be kind of fun, I think. It's kind of like a puzzle, right? You know the number you've got to hit. You've just got to do what you can to get it down. Um, but if you're struggling with that, ask another person to help you. Because sometimes when you write your paper, it's really hard because you get attached to the way you've written it and the way you've told the story. And somebody else might say, yeah, but this phrase isn't really needed. And I bet we can do this another way. So that's what I would recommend is getting some advice from another person who can okay. help you trim it down. Okay, like a new perspective. Yes, exactly. Okay. So um, I was wondering, um, I was wondering if I could actually like get your help with some essays, like because some of them I feel like I have a lot of like a lot of work to do in my essays. Sure. Because you said to also like um, include like some of your experiences, like things that make you stand out more. Like mm -hmm. sometimes you might not have like SAT scores. Maybe your essay will make your like cover up for that. Right. Yeah, yeah, those types of things. So I was sure. wondering um, if, like, you could go over, like, one of my yeah. or something. Are you a VIP member of Scholarship Owl, or are you a member of Scholarship Owl? I'm just a member of Scholarship Owl. Okay. Yeah. All right. So email support at, so support at scholarshipowl.com. Let them know you came to this webinar and that, um, that I said that they should put you in contact with me so that I can take a look at your essay. All right. Okay, cool. Okay, perfect. All right. That's Thanks so much. Right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank no you. problem. Bye-bye. All right, Krista. Are you there, Krista? Whoop. Hold on one second here. I think I, uh, let me go back. I don't, I don't know if you guys are seeing a whiteboard here. <laughs> um, I don't know how to, well, let's see. I'm, I'm showing that I'm seeing a whiteboard here. I don't know how to get rid of it. But um, let's see. Krista, are you there? I wonder if I can, I don't know if you guys see what I see, but I see a whiteboard, <laughs> that transparency slider. Uh, okay. Well, 
We'll see. Um, I don't know, Krista, if you're here, I see you there. Do, Krista, do you see what I see? Do you see like, I may be seeing something different on my screen than you guys are seeing. Uh, your microphone's not on. Can you turn it on? I still cannot hear you. Let me try again. I still can't hear you. Um, okay, let, I'm gonna give you a second to see if you can figure out your mic. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and let uh, Chad into the room while we're seeing if Krista can get her mic going. So let's see here. All right, somebody said, I see a black screen and you're in a little box. That's what I see on my screen. Okay, so just ignore the black box. I'm here and I see Chad has joined the room. So Chad, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and let you in here. Oops. Okay. Chad, are you there? Uh, can you, can you see? There, oh. I see you. Now you filled the black box. That's good for okay. us. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a question about um, other people's essays, like, uh, like you know, when they say like past winners, uh, and then you are like able to see all of their essays. So it's just like, do you think like not necessarily like straight up like copying them, but like, do you think like if you were to take some of the elements that they use, that like the whoever is grading the scholarship would want to see it, or like should we just do something completely different? Well, and I and I appreciate your question. I think it's hard. Sometimes, you know, it's easy to go online and look at what other people have written because it gives you ideas and stuff. And I totally understand that. But then also when you're looking at somebody else's ideas, sometimes it's hard to think about how they apply to you and, and it can be difficult to choose what to do. Um, and it can also be a little intimidating because a lot of the time the essays that are online are the top essays. And so it's like, wow, I can't even compete with that. It's written so well. And so then you may be inclined to go, well, maybe I should do something like what they're doing. I recommend that students, you know, focus on being themselves. So you don't have to be the best essay writer in the world. You just have to be able to show the reader who you are. And, um, and if you have some trouble with, you know, anything you have trouble with your, with your essay, if you need some help phrasing or, you know, just kind of putting the final package together, you can always get feedback from somebody who can help you out. But I wouldn't get caught up in worrying about what other people are writing and just focus on what you bring to the table and how you can show yourself to um, the person who's gonna be reading your essays. Uh, okay, and actually I have something else. Um, I think you mentioned like you have students are like, are they like like scholarship Allison's students or like could we like be one of your students <laughs> or like? I, yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of people that want my help, which I really appreciate. Um, but of course, I'm only one person and I have a limited amount of time. Um, mm -hmm. I do work for Scholarship Owl. So when I see students that I work with, I'm working with them through Scholarship Owl. So that's why I'm saying if you want my help, you'd need to email support and see what we oh. can do. Um, but normally, if you are interested in getting essay writing assistance, we do have an essay writing package, or you can be a VIP member. And through the VIP membership, I work with students as well. So, um, you know, but you can email support at scholarshipall.com and we'll see what we can do. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. I'm going to see if I can figure out now how to get you out of the room now that my screen is kind of different. Oh, there we go. I got my screen back. All right. Krista, can, let's see if your mic is working. It's still not working. Um, okay, what I'm thinking, Krista, is maybe to go ahead and put your question in the chat and I can respond to it. Can you type it into the chat and I'll just talk to you? So while we wait for her, I'm gonna let somebody else in here. I'm gonna let Nicole into the room and uh, we'll see if Nicole joins. And in the meantime, maybe, maybe Krista is gonna ask that question. Um, somebody says there are a lot of institutions that have pre-college programs and I don't know which one to do. That's true. There are a lot of pre-college programs. Um, the best thing I can say is just like when you're trying to select colleges to apply to, to when you decide which colleges to apply to, um, you can also research pre-college programs and go through that same process. Um, okay. Still waiting for Krista to ask the question. 
Meanwhile, and I'm still waiting for somebody else to join, I'm gonna also let uh, Nyla into the room. I'm gonna go into the chat here. Um, okay, continue looking through chat questions. Um, as an early college student, some schools might not transfer all the credits. So you have to find out what colleges and universities do. That's a great comment, actually. Um, we had the student here that was part of Running Start, which is an early college program. There are a lot of great ways that you can get college credits while in high school, either through the AB program, the or, I'm sorry, AP or IB, or dual enrollment. Um, but you do need to check with the colleges you apply to to make sure they're going to accept your units. Okay, Nyla, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, so I have two questions. Um, okay. One is, what advice would you give when it comes to the mental aspect of applying? So to me, I always say, you know, keep a positive mindset the whole time you apply, but it's kind of hard to do that knowing that you have like a bunch of other kids applying for the same thing. So I guess what would be your advice when it comes to keeping a positive attitude while you apply? Yeah, it, it can certainly be overwhelming. Um, and especially this year with so much else going on, right? Um, it's hard to keep your head above water and to feel positive about everything going on in your life. Um, but, you know, the only thing I can say is that, you know, college is a transformative experience. It's something you're going to really enjoy. Um, hopefully in fall 2021, hopefully we will get live in-person instruction uh, for most students. So, you know, I'm hopeful. I think it's something we can all look forward to. And, uh, you know, you just have to talk to yourself and just say, okay, you know, I'm going to just do this. It's hard. I'm going to, I know I need to spend time every week planning for college or applying for scholarships or applying to colleges. Uh, but you just keep a positive attitude and, and congratulate yourself when you get things done. Celebrate the little accomplishments along the way so that while you're waiting to hear back from colleges, you know, you can reflect on how hard you've worked all year. All right. And I have one last one. Okay. What are of showing and not telling. Now, you know, in school, they would say use imagery, and I'm, I think I'm pretty good when it comes to imagery, but it's like sometimes it's a lot easier to just say how you feel rather than describe it. So, yeah. I think it depends. Song. Yeah, I think it depends on, you know, the, the particular situation that you're talking about, right? Because every essay is a little different. Um, but I guess the, the best way that I can say to describe it is sometimes I read essays for students and they're really flat. And, and when I say flat, that's like a term that people use in psychology to talk about a really flat personality. So, you know, if you read an essay and you just think, gosh, this person doesn't really care about what they're talking about, sometimes you can sense that. And so by showing rather than just telling, you're actually able to bring more of yourself into your essay and be more emotionally connected. And that's really important because you know, these in most schools do not conduct interviews. So in most cases, the only way they get to know who you are is from what you're, they're reading in your essay. So that you really need to show what you care about, what you're passionate about, um, how you spend your time, um, you know, the things that matter to you in your life. So if you can do that and use words that convey that, that's going to be the way that you show rather than tell. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And let's see, Krista, I'm going to check one more time, see if, if your mic is working. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Nicole. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. And I did see, Krista, that you asked your question in the chat, so I will respond. I'm just going to let Nicole finish talking first. Okay, Nicole, go ahead. So I am applying into a pretty competitive program at the school I'm attending. Um, and I'm working on the essay right now. Um, one of the questions that they ask is like, what is your motivation for applying? Um, I was wondering if it hurts or helps to mention that you have children. I don't want them to be like, oh, well, maybe she's too busy. You know what I mean? Okay, sure. You know, it, I think it depends on what the essay prompt is, right? It depends on what you're talking about. Um, but I think that, you know, first of all, you might be surprised that a lot of colleges really want to have a lot of diversity on their campus. And that includes that they want some older students. They want people that have children or that have had a life um, between high school and college. So um, it's not necessarily something that would go against you. It could actually go in your favor. I think it shows a lot of resilience to be able to raise a family and go to college. So um, I wouldn't hide from it. I think that's okay. Um, you know, and I would say, 
you know, in your essay, maybe you can talk about how you are managing to be parent as well as go to school. So you can talk about, you know, where, how you plan to take care of them while you're in class or whatever, you know, if you have childcare lined up or if you've got um, a family member that's going to provide care. Um, but I don't think they're really going to worry about how you're going to manage it. I think they'll be more interested in the fact that you're going for it at this point in your life. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. All right, Krista, I'm gonna take a look at your question, yay. Uh, you say, I'm a 46 year old single mom of three kids. I've been on disability for the past 10 years. If I can get help through you all, all you can do, it, all you can do it too. Who has returned to college? Scholarship Owl has helped me get scholarships for my specific needs. Also, you just gave the information I got from taking a whole college class and more, so thank you. Wow, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm so glad that I could be so helpful. Um, and so you said that scholarship has helped you get scholarships. So that's amazing. I'm, I'm really happy for you. Um, I would love to hear more about what scholarships you've received. Um, uh, maybe you can, um, email me or email support and have them pass it on to me. So I'm going to, for those who want to email me, I'm going to put the support email right here in the chat so that people can see it. Um, and anyone who emails, just say, I attended the webinar, please forward this to Jennifer or forward this to Jen, they know who I am. And, uh, and they will go ahead and forward those emails to me so I can respond to those of you personally. Um, and Krista, I'd love to hear more. So please do email me and, uh, and we can talk more about it. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna move you out of the room and I'm gonna see who is left here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna invite I think it's Ayana, hope I'm pronouncing that right. And um, and I'm also gonna invite Kelly, hope I'm pronouncing that one right. So I'm gonna see who gets in the room first with me and then there's a couple more people after that. Um, thank you all for hanging out. I know it's past, um, past the hour, so um, I appreciate you all hanging out and I'm gonna do everything I can uh, to answer the questions. Let's see here. Um, somebody says, I haven't really had any leadership experience and few volunteer experiences since the pandemic. Do you have any recommendations for how to get more experience or should I just look for prompts that ask for other areas? So I totally understand it's a challenging time, right? Um, if you don't have a lot of volunteer experience and if you don't have a way to get some, then yeah, probably choosing another prompt would be helpful. But also you can talk about things that you did before COVID and I think that's perfectly okay too. Let's see, um, it looks like I'm not getting people in the room. So now I'm gonna invite Preserve into the room and we'll see if I can get that person in. I'm also gonna invite Rosalie and uh, we'll just see who shows up here. Um, I'm gonna look and see if there's any more questions. Um, let's see. Um, I love how some of you are giving advice to each other. I think that's really awesome. Um, okay, who's here? Okay, Ayana, hope I'm pronouncing that right. How can I help you? And I see Rosalie is here too. So Rosalie and Kelly, oh good, you're all here. Um, one by one, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, now everybody's here. <laughs> okay, uh, Ayana. Can you speak up? Hello? Hello? I can barely hear you. Can you speak um, up a little bit? I don't know. Are you there, Ayana? Um, okay, um, Ayana, I'm gonna ask some, I'm gonna have somebody else talk for a minute and then I'll try you again shortly. Um, let's see, so Kelly. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you great, thank you. Do you see me or no? I cannot see you, but that's okay. If you can't okay. get your camera on, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I, I just have a quick question. I am 52 years old <laughs> and, okay. and awesome. returning to school. And I have I have not been in school in 32 years, graduated from college back in the early 90s. And okay. so I am going for my theological degree in seminary. Wow. And the problem that I'm having is I've applied for so many of these scholarships, but I hear nothing back. So I don't know if it's something that I'm doing, saying, or not writing what they want. So I'm just trying to get a little bit of advice as to 
what to put in your essays for a returning student of 32 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got life experience that most other applicants are not going to have. So you already do have something. Um, can I ask, are the scholarships you're applying to, are they on our platform? Are they university scholarships? Like, where are you finding them? Um, I'm finding them on Scholarship Owl. Okay. I am finding them on there. Um, I attend Phoenix Seminary, so I'm looking for those that are, you know, geared towards what I'm doing, obviously, or for something else. My whole career has been law enforcement, so. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> really interesting. Okay. Well, um, what I would say, first of all, is um, keep trying. Um, many of the scholarships also, you know, you might apply, but it might be a few months before they actually select a winner. Mm -hmm. So it could be that some of these are just in limbo where you actually may be awarded the scholarship and they just haven't decided yet. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is you want to make sure to apply for scholarships for the colleges that you're actually applying to. Um, so that's one thing that's really important to do. I'm already attending a school. So I'm already in a school. Okay. And have you already applied to scholarships through that school as well? I have, but their scholarships are depending on first year, second year, all that. So I'm a first semester seminary student. Okay. So I have to wait till my second year to be able to apply for their particular prize. Okay. And have you submitted the FAFSA? I have, and that's another long story. <laughs> it's okay. a long story. Let's just say I'm not getting any FAFSA right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my best advice is just to keep applying because the more you apply for, the, the you know, the more likely you're going to get scholarships and to focus mm -hmm. on ones that have requirements. In other words, ones that require an essay or a video mm -hmm. instead of no essay scholarships. Also, try to look for the scholarships in our platform that have fewer applicants. Um, okay. Because you can see right in the platform how many students applied, and your chances are going to be that much higher if you have less competition. Got it. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. And that was Kelly, so I'm going to remove Kelly from the room. All right, uh, let's see. Ayana, I'm going to try you again. Can you try to speak up this time? Hello? Are you there? Yeah, can you speak up a little bit and ask your question? Ayana, can you ask your question? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Do you hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Can you ask your question? All right. I'm going to have you ask it in the chat instead, and I'm going to move on to somebody else because for some reason it doesn't seem that we're connecting. All right. Uh, Rosalie, how can I help you? Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I know we're going over. Um, quick question. It's a little specific, but I hope maybe somebody else can benefit from it. Speaking of life experience and volunteering and resumes and things like that, some extracurricular activities I've participated in is I've volunteered a lot for political campaigns. Mm -hmm. so I'm interested in your opinion because some of these scholarships are you know, they're very general and, you know, they're all levels of education. They're really um, generous donors from different companies and things like that. And so I get a little concerned with how specific I should be on maybe which campaigns I might have volunteered for. So I'm interested to know your opinion on that. Yeah, that is a great question. And I understand your concern. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, my daughter, um, just my daughter's 22. Yeah, she just um, recently applied for jobs. But I'm not and uh, I'm not Hold on one second. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, so she just recently applied for jobs and the recruiter said that she should remove a couple things on her resume that sort of showed her political affiliation without saying that, but it was a campaign thing, like what you're talking about. So, you know, I think you do have to be careful about where you're applying. I think if you're applying for public universities in a liberal state, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, and I'm just gonna use this as an example, if you volunteered for the Bernie Sanders campaign or something like that, you're probably fine. Mm -hmm. If you're applying to conservative universities in a conservative state and you've been on, you know, and you've been involved in conservative campaigns, you're probably okay there too. But if you are applying, let's say, in Texas, for example, and you are from a blue state and you were a liberal and volunteered for liberal campaigns, you may not want to mention it in your application. So, you know, I think that choice is kind of up to you. And I think you just have to kind of use common sense based on where you, who you volunteered with and which colleges you're applying to. 
Thank you. Yeah, thankfully, I think my uh, college of choice is a more liberal one. Um, I think I get a little caught up on like scholarships when they're asking, you know, when there's forms that you fill out about extracurricular activities. You want to be as specific as possible and really highlight yourself. So I think that's kind of where I struggle. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily know the political affiliation of some of these, you know, maybe law firms or other generous donors <laughs> that are contributing to your guys' platform. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, if you're not sure, you're, then don't talk about it. Talk about other things. Fair. Okay. Well, thank <laughs> right. you so much. You're welcome. Take care. You too. All right. Uh, preserve. I, I muted your audio because it was conflicting with my conversation with Rosalie. I don't know if you can get your mic back on. Um, if you can, then I'd love to talk with you. There you are. Uh, can you ask? Okay. Your question? Uh, yeah. Hello. Hello. How can I help you? Um, my name is Preserve. Uh, I just want to ask. Um, when writing a scholarship, basically, like, I don't mean, for instance, I have a portfolio which is not relating to a feed I want to, like, a feed I'm applying for. Can I include it in the scholarship? Do you get it? It's okay. I'm having trouble hearing you. I, I know you're asking if you could include something when applying for scholarships. What were you asking about if you could include? Can you, can you ask one more time? Because I couldn't hear you very well. Only different from the field I'm applying for. I mean, can I include um, a portfolio? Oh, a portfolio. Okay, I got you. I have an, I have a portfolio. Yeah. Okay. Another field. Okay. Is not so, relating to the field I'm applying for. Okay. So, um, if, in answer to your question, you're asking if you can submit a portfolio when applying for scholarships. So you can, oh, and I think he left the room, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and answer the question anyway. That's perfectly fine. Um, so to, um, if you have a portfolio and you want to submit it, you can only submit it for the scholarships where they actually allow you to submit a portfolio. Um, you know, otherwise you've just got to submit whatever they request, whether it's an essay or a video or a photo, whatever they ask for is what you want to submit without submitting extraneous things like a portfolio. All right. I'm going to, answer one more question uh because I, I know it's running kind of late here um i'm gonna let's see i'm gonna invite sabora into the room and see if i can get that person in the room here hopefully i've said your name okay um and while we're waiting i just want to mention that um as i said you're going to be able to get a link to the replay video it's going to be coming in the next 24 hours you'll also get the link within that same email um, to a, an application essay check, checklist that you'll be getting. Um, still waiting for Sabora. I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. Somebody says, I'm 14 years old. I have an idea of what I want to do as a career. However, I'm not entirely sure how to involve, how to be involved in the field. Do you have any extracurriculars that would benefit me if I want to major in law or psychology or sociology? Um, I can come up with some ideas very quickly. Um, Working at nonprofits where you'd be working with people is always a good way to go, whether you're helping children or just helping people that are in different situations. Um, so that's always good because sociology is really about helping people and understanding people. Um, in terms of law, um, you could always volunteer for your local police explorers program if that interests you. Um, you know, that's one option. You could also see if there might be an internship um, with your local city government or county government. Sometimes they do accept high school interns for those kinds of positions. So um, that's what I would say to Julia who asked that question. And looks like um, Sabora left the room, isn't here. So I'm now gonna ask Seth. He will now be the last person that I invite into the room. Uh, let's see if Seth can join me. Um, Let's see here, Bao says, I'm a junior in high school who wants to apply for a BSMD program. Do you have any advice about how to do so successfully? Well, those are really good programs um, where you, it's a combined bachelor's degree with a link to get into medical school. So it's an awesome program. Um, the best way to do that is of course, to be one of the very top students who are applying. So that would be getting really top grades, top test scores if you're taking the tests. Um, you know, doing all their extracurriculars, your volunteer service, all the stuff you can imagine. Hey, I'm back. Can you hear me? Hey, hey Seth. Hi, I do hear you. Sorry about that. I'm I'm in a Zoom meeting at the same time, and I'm uh, and I'm okay. attending. I'm back again. So I have okay. two more questions. 
Okay, and yeah. I see Sabora is here, so Beth, keep it kind of quick, and then I'll get Sabora in. Okay, so should I focus on uh, outside scholarships more or the college I'm attending scholarships because I'm taking advantage of outside scholarships and want to bring something in from them if I, if I win because I do qualify for them, but there's a lot to offer from the university scholarships as well, so should I focus on them and, and put a lot of time and effort into them more? Wow, um, that's a great question. Of course, you know what I'm going to say. Do both, <laughs> right? That's the right answer. Um, but certainly, if you know for sure which college you're going to be attending, definitely apply to all the scholarships you can at that university, as well as the outside scholarships. I know sometimes it can be difficult when you're maybe you've applied to ten to ten schools and you don't know where you're going to go. It can be difficult to decide how do I apply to scholarships at all of the colleges? But if you know which college you want to attend, definitely apply to everything you possibly can through that university as well as outside scholarships. And also scholarships in your local community. Uh, talk to your high school career center or guidance counselor. They have a list of local scholarships that you can apply to. And this goes to everybody. Always apply to local scholarships. Some of you have probably heard that. I definitely recommend that you do that. All right. All right. That's very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so for my last question of the day here. Oh my God, good evening. Thank you so much. First and foremost, I wanna say this was awesome. Um, I ask that you please email it to us because I try to take notes. I'm a, I'm a note taker, I'm very thorough with notes. I like to go back and, and like catch some of the things that you said. But for me, I'm a doctoral candidate. I'm in New Jersey and okay. um, I wanted to know um, in terms of writing the letter, I, you know, I can get all of that. But as far as the scholarships themselves, I'm not finding many scholarships for doctoral candidates. It is hard, I know. So are you already in a doctoral program? Yes, I'm actually at dissertation phase right now. So I'm, I'm preparing my proposal and then I have this to defend and I'm done. Okay, and are you getting, are you in like a fully funded doctoral program? No. You're not, okay. So, because many doctoral programs are what they call fully funded, meaning that like if you do research or, or if you're a teacher's assistant, then you can have part of your college paid for. Um, do they offer that opportunity to you? Could you be a TA if you wanted? Um, I could, but it was never offered. Oh, interesting, okay. Well, um, have you talked to the university to see if they do have um, funding for dissertations? Do they have scholarships that you could apply for? No, I haven't talked to them, but I will. Okay, oh. definitely. Yes, yes. Um, anyone who is pursuing a doctorate or pursuing a master's degree, you definitely want to apply for any scholarships or funding offered by the university itself. And you can also say, hey, I'll be creative. I'll, I'll be a TA. Give me some opportunities or can I do some research? What can I do to help pay for my dissertation? And you might be pleasantly surprised that they have options for you. I'm writing. That's why I hear you, but I'm uh, okay. Wow, I never thought of this, uh, but I thank you. I, I think the presentation was great. I see a lot of the high school students there, yeah. and I'm like, okay, it kind of reminded me of when I was a teacher with the high school students. But this was amazing. I appreciate you. I'm We all do, I'm sure. Oh, I read some of the comments as we're going through, or even taking the time out to even share this information because I'm trying to finish up. I see someone getting ready to come in. Some are, you know, just, you know, kind of like fishing around for answers. And for you to take the time out and give us this wealth of information, I personally want to say thank you. Uh, I, I do. I am a member. I am a member of um, Scholarship Web. Um, so I, you know, I'm pretty much. I mean, Scholarship Owl. I'm pretty yeah. much on there. But um, it's, it's, I didn't know this about the TA. You know, I definitely will look into that. Awesome. I will definitely look into that. And, and um, even the fully funded itself. You know, scholarships within my university. That's definitely. What I finish. I have two okay. semesters and I'm done. So oh, I need to just, you know, you. all of the regular funding run run out. When you get to doctoral candidates and know this stu fellow students, when you get to doctorate, like you've absorbed everything. Like there's really not even financial aid, like loans, you know, the loans are ridiculous. I don't want to yeah. keep paying. I'm still paying previous loans. So if I could <laughs> just get these last two semesters and just finish up and be done yeah. without having to, you know, take a loan, because I, I don't, I don't want absolutely. to. Absolutely. Then I definitely want to look into that. All right. And I have your email. I recorded your email, so I will definitely, you know, follow awesome. your instructions with that. All but right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right, everyone. So 
Uh, I'm so glad so many of you stayed through this. Is so exciting. Um, I have 100 students still on with me an hour and a half after we began. It's very cool. Um, so thank you all so much. And um, look for that email that has the replay video. And you know what? You can share it with your friends. You probably have lots of friends that need help uh, with scholarships and uh, with knowing how to write essays. So feel free to forward that so that they can take a look as well. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.